Hi everyone, I'm Gogo, and today, we're talking about low-protein diets. At its core, the primary role of the kidneys is to eliminate metabolic waste from the body. When kidney function falters, their capacity to expel these waste products diminishes. Consequently, substances like urea, creatinine, and guanidinium, resulting from protein breakdown, accumulate in the bloodstream, transforming into harmful toxins detrimental to overall health. A low-protein diet, in the context of chronic renal insufficiency, typically entails a daily protein intake of less than 0.8 grams per kilogram of standard body weight falling within the range of 0.6 to 0.8 grams per kilogram of standard body weight per day. This dietary approach effectively curtails the production and buildup of protein catabolic byproducts, ultimately alleviating the strain on the kidneys and decelerating the progression of the disease. Low Protein Dietary Recommendations Start slowly. For individuals with kidney issues, the shift from a regular diet to a low-protein one should be a gradual process. This gradual approach helps prevent a sudden, significant drop in protein intake, which could otherwise lead to a rapid decline in renal function. Second, option for high-quality low-protein sources. When it comes to low-protein diets, it's essential to prioritize high-quality proteins. These proteins, found in animal sources and soy products, closely mimic human amino acids, boast high bioavailability, and are easily digestible, including options like meat, eggs, milk, and soybean-based products. Patients with chronic kidney disease should limit their consumption of low-quality proteins, such as peanuts and cereals. In some cases, consider incorporating wheat starch as a staple food alternative to rice and flour. A high-quality, low-protein diet typically recommends that approximately 50 to 70 percent of daily protein intake comes from high-quality sources. For instance, a patient might aim for a daily protein intake of around 70 grams, with animal protein comprising roughly 35 to 49 grams, while the remaining portion can consist of lower quality proteins. However, it's important to note that not all kidney patients have a one-size-fits-all protein intake requirement. Third, ensure sufficient energy intake. The adoption of a low-protein diet can sometimes lead to inadequate energy consumption, potentially resulting in malnutrition. To address this, patients should follow their doctor's recommendations and consider appropriate supplements like compound alpha-ketoacid tablets or specialized nutritional products designed for renal disease. These supplements can help bolster the supply of essential amino acids and energy, ensuring a balanced nutritional intake. Important reminder, a low-protein diet may not be suitable for all kidney disease patients. Every case is unique, and those considering it should consult their healthcare professionals to create a personalized plan for implementing a low-protein diet. Following a high-quality, low-protein diet is entirely manageable. It requires carefulness, patience, and a commitment to a healthy lifestyle. With these steps, we can effectively manage kidney disease and lead a fulfilling life. Okay, that's all for today. See you next time.